What's up fellow bookworms and welcome back to the channel. My name is Dylan and today I thought we could do something a little bit new here on the channel. If you've been around here for a while, you've definitely seen some of my book of the month videos where I show you guys the selections each month that book of the month has offered. We discuss them. I give you the brief synopsis and probably do a bad job at that and then decide if there's anything worth picking or if we're just going to skip for the month. Well, I thought it might be fun to kind of take that just one step further and actually read my picks kind of together, assuming that you also pick the same book as me. So I thought that it might be fun for those of you who did pick the same book or books as me to kind of read them together. But if you didn't choose the same book as me, maybe to just kind of get some more information about a new book to see if maybe it's something that you are interested or not. So I thought that I could start doing some really short reading vlogs where I read at least one of the books that I chose through book of the month. If you saw the book of the month video for this month, you know that I picked this book, White Horse, which is a horror story about a woman whose mother has passed away. And after her death, she receives an item that belonged to her mother. I think it was like a bracelet or something. And attached to that item kind of seems like is the spirit of her mother and also this kind of monster or demon or something like that. And once these events start to happen, once she receives that bracelet and the monster attaches itself to her, she goes on this journey to just find out some family secrets. This is one that I am really excited to read and I think sounds really fascinating, but... I asked you guys which of these two books that I chose I should read, and the one that you guys said you were most interested in is this one, The Last Party. Now before I say any more about that book, I just wanna say that I have already recorded this video once with my wireless microphone, and it was dead the entire time, so I got no audio in that video. I'm gonna try to remember to say everything that I've already said and hope that I don't forget anything, but basically with this book, we've got, it seems like your classic murder mystery. There is a party that is thrown by this well-to-do person who owns uh, at least one vacation rental in this small lakefront community, this small village, and he invites all the villagers to his party and he ends up getting killed at his own party. And then as the investigation kind of unfolds, we find out probably pretty quickly that pretty much everyone at the party had a reason to hate the guy, had a reason to potentially want him dead, which obviously presents a big problem for the person trying to figure out who did it, because apparently everyone has a motive in this murder. So... I'm excited for this one. The only thing that I am going to keep an eye out for is that because it is kind of such this such of a classic setup that maybe there might just be the overuse of some classic tropes and it might just seem a little too familiar. But honestly, I'm I'm not going to expect that. I expect it to be kind of a classic setup with an interesting take. That's what I'm hoping for. But I am really excited to read this one. It sounds like your classic mystery thriller, and it just sounds like a ton of fun. My super early prediction, and I don't think this is right, but if it is right, spoiler alert, my guess is that maybe everyone is in on it. Like maybe it was this big conspiracy. Obviously not everyone could have killed him, but maybe they all knew. Like they all conspire to kill the guy at this party. That's my prediction. Have absolutely no idea if it's true, but I think it could make sense. This book is about 400 pages long, so I don't think it should take me all that long to read it, but we'll see. Time doesn't really matter for this video. I will provide some updates along the way, any interesting thoughts, but I'll definitely give a kind of full-blown review at the end, so that'll probably be the bulk of the video. So for now, I'm going to dig into this one. I'm super excited to start it, and I will see you guys in some future updates. I just wanted to pop in with a midway update. I'm on page 220 or so, and there are 401 pages. And pretty much everything I expected based off of the synopsis has been correct. This is very much a detective murder mystery. And I kind of do like the direction 
that the story has gone so far. I feel like with a murder mystery, as you go through the uh, potential suspects, all of them are either going to have absolutely no motive and they all loved the victim and, you know, that kind of thing. But in this book, basically everyone hates him. Not quite openly hates him. They at least pretend to have kind of sort of cared for him to the detectives. But based off of the style in which this book is written, we have it's written in like third person with a possibly unreliable narrator. Don't know for sure, of course, but um, the way it's written, you get their inner thoughts and you get the backstories, you know, the things that are never actually said in the dialogue, which has been really interesting. So I'm definitely liking the direction of this story so far. We've basically, I think, introduced and gotten to know all of the characters and potential suspects so far, though every probably... I don't know, five to 10 chapters, there is a new perspective that's introduced, which has been pretty fun and unique. All the characters are pretty likable for the most part. I mean, I like the ones that I think I'm supposed to like. And, you know, there aren't really any that I don't like, but you get the idea. And like I said, pretty much everything that I assumed would be true from the synopsis came true, except the kind of basic setup. Rather than a guy owning a couple of vacation rentals, the setup is actually more involved than that. There's kind of this new development that goes up in a really small town in Wales that has kind of disrupted the town and all the locals are not in favor of this development. All the people who moved in are too ritzy and just rich for the town. So there's kind of like a natural divide, a natural... Maybe feud is too strong of a word, but kind of a natural rift in that regard. But anyway, as of now, all the potential suspects look like they could be guilty or innocent. There's really no, nothing as of yet seems obvious like a giveaway. You know, sometimes with a murder mystery, you read something that probably was a little too explicit, a little too much of a hint. But so far, I don't think there's been anything like that. So I am really excited to finish this. I have been able to read this for long periods of time. I'm not much of like a marathon reader. I'm like a 30 minutes, take a break kind of reader. But this one has been really easy to sit down and read for hours and hours. So probably a few more hours and I will be done with this one. And I will give a more formal little update slash review when I get to that point. So it is kind of late, but I just finished the last party and I wanted to kind of give my full thoughts before I had time to really think about it too much. I think sometimes I overthink things and I overanalyze and sometimes forget that, I mean, I guess the point of a book is just to be entertained. So with that in mind, here are kind of my initial thoughts of the last party. And just real quick, before we actually get into the review itself, I will just mention in passing that I think today, for me at least, is the official release day for this book. But one of the cool things about Book of the Month is that I was able to get my hands on this book several days early. Now, this video is not sponsored by Book of the Month. They're not paying me. They don't even know I exist. But I think Book of the Month is pretty cool. And if you haven't considered it or if you're not signed up for it, 
I highly recommend that you check it out. There's a link in the description. You can use that link and get your first box for, I think, $10. So having said that, let's get into the review and let's start off with the cons, the things that I didn't like about this book. That way we can end on a more positive note with all the things that I did enjoy about The Last Party. So I think the main complaint that people are going to have with this book is that there were probably too many characters and there were a lot of characters. Now I read this book in like a 24 hour span. It's the first time I've ever actually read a book in the time I thought I could read that book. So for me, it wasn't really an issue because I didn't have time to forget who these characters were. But if I was reading this book at a more casual pace, you know, maybe reading it in a week or two, I could definitely see forgetting who these characters are, you know, after some time has passed. It also doesn't help that the book follows a very non-linear timeline. We kind of follow, basically each character has a chapter. I mean, not just one chapter, but we kind of flip flop from characters and their entire perspective is confined to a single chapter. So it kind of jumps back and forth, the main day being New Year's Eve, but sometimes we're jumping forward to June or we're jumping back to October with a specific character. So I could definitely see getting confused with that. And then also with the characters, I do think that a couple of the characters were just a little overly cliche. And I do think that this is a byproduct of having so many characters. I mean, you've obviously, you can only really afford to have one or two main characters, which I think this book had. There were two I would consider main characters in this book. We'll talk more about that in a second, but aside from the main characters, there were some really interesting side characters, but there were also a couple that were just like, you know, okay, I've seen this character before in a million other books. A couple that come to my mind is one of them was like your stereotypical, like, influencer who is addicted to Instagram and that kind of thing. And then there was also kind of like the town drunk character, which, you know, serves a purpose, but it doesn't exactly scream originality. And at the same time, without saying anything at all to kind of elaborate, I do think that there were at times some overly used murder mystery tropes, but really not that many, certainly not as many as I expected, given the somewhat generic premise of the book, at least according to the synopsis. Okay, sorry for the dramatic change in lighting, but my ring light thing here that I got from Target for like $3 has officially kicked the bucket. Uh, I can't charge it anymore. The little charging thing like fell out of it, so, Anyway, I don't have a light other than the way too harsh ceiling fan light. So I apologize for that. But we're talking about some cons of the book. And the next one on the list was that it was just a little bit of a slow burn, kind of a too slow burn, at least in parts. It was 400 and I think actually three pages long. I thought it was 401 pages long, but there was like a little mini epilogue at the end I didn't account for. And I do think for the most part, something was happening. We were always building towards something meaningful and useful to the story, but I guess it's kind of just par for the course with a murder mystery when you're exploring all your potential suspects and kind of, you know, just investigating. There are naturally going to be some dead ends in an investigation. And there certainly were in this book that didn't really feel like a waste of time, given obviously the detective element of the story. But, you know, it didn't always feel super nice and tidy. And it didn't feel like the story was always every page being propelled forward at maximum speed. So if you don't like something that's not full throttle, pedal to the metal every page, that's something maybe to know about as well. Now, speaking of the mystery element in this story, I will say that this book was not necessarily predictable. I mean, I certainly didn't see the ending coming. It also wasn't super shocking. If I was to try to compare this book to something, I think the best way to compare it would be to uh, think about maybe a ride, like what comes to my mind is Splash Mountain at Disney World. If you've been on Splash Mountain, then you'll know what I'm talking about. If not, bear with me. So Splash Mountain is a ride where you are in this boat and you're going through you know, this setup or whatever, the ride, and there are a couple times where you think you're gonna drop, <laughs> but it turns out to just be like a, just a little dip. And you do that a couple times, just a couple little dips, kind of to psych you out, sort of, and also, you know, it's kind of fun to go on the little dips. 
But then at the end, there is the big drop <laughs> that you can see from the line outside the ride. So I would kind of compare that to this book. There were some dips, nothing too shocking, not really a thriller. This book was classified as a thriller. I would say it's not a thriller at all. It's a mystery through and through. But at the end, there is that big drop. There's kind of a big twist. Again, not, not a shocking twist, not an all-time great twist by any means, but a satisfying twist that I didn't see coming. So while it wasn't predictable, it also wasn't like a huge shock reveal kind of gasp <laughs> at the end. And then something kind of independent from the story itself, kinda, uh, that I noticed that was kind of distracting was it just felt like there was a lot of like man hating <laughs> throughout the book. Like all men are evil, evil men did this, you know, evil men are responsible for all our problems kind of thing, which I mean, personally, I found to be a little silly, uh, but that was just my opinion as, as a man. Uh, but other than that, those are the only cons really that I can think of for this story. And I don't, like I said, want to overthink it too much. So now let's talk about the things that I did like about this book. Now, admittedly, my cons list is a bit longer than my pros list, but I value the things on the pros list more than I value the things on the cons list, if that makes sense. In other words, the things that it did wrong were not that important, while the things that I think the story did well were the important things to do well. So the first thing that I really loved about this book was the main character. I tend to gravitate toward like character driven stories, stories with interesting characters. I obviously like a big twist as much as the next guy. I like an interesting world as much as the next guy. But for me, usually it's the characters that are going to make or break a story. And I thought that the main character in this story was amazing. Now I did say that there are probably two main characters. I do think that there's like uh, one who's the more main character, like the main main character and then a second main character. But I thought the main main character was just really good, really well developed, very uh, deep. There's a lot of depth to her character and just a really easy character to root for and to care about. Now this story did feature a really interesting world not quite as interesting, I would think, as the main character, but almost equally so. I think the world that is built in this story is really well done. There are a lot of characters and there are even a lot of settings, but I think they all serve a purpose and they were really important to the story. So I don't know if I've really elaborated on it much prior, but the setting here is this lakefront town and the lake is actually split in two. England lays claim to one half of the lake and Wales lays claim to the other side. Well, obviously there's some history there. The Welsh and the English don't particularly like one another. So I'm told I'm neither English nor Welsh, but that's what I hear. And so there's some tension there. And then there's also just this very scenic scene scenic setting, I guess, of a lake that is surrounded by a beautiful mountain range with a lot of trees. And I could really picture the setting being described and it was eerie at times, you know, this foggy lake. And it was also kind of idyllic at times, you know, on the summer days, I felt like I was experiencing a summer day at the lake where the sun is shining. You know, you get the picture. The setting was really well done, very vivid and integral to the story in a very important way. And then the third thing that I really loved about this story was the kind of will they, won't they slash buddy cop kind of situation. So I don't necessarily read a lot of romance. I don't necessarily like a lot of romance, but there was kind of that will they, won't they element in this story that I thought added a lot of uh, tension to the story and a really interesting layer to this already pretty well done story. So all in all, I did rate the last party five stars on Goodreads. And again, when I gave it five stars, that was more of a, how do I feel immediately after finishing the book rating? And I liked it. I was satisfied. There was kind of a unanswered question at the end. I promise that's not really a spoiler. And there was a little section at the back of the book where it's kind of like an interview with the author kind of thing. And the author did say that they are currently writing book two in this series. Well, what will be a series probably pretty soon. So that's good because there was like, I was kind of disappointed at first. I was like, well, you know, that kind of leaves me with more questions and answers. And 
that kind of felt a little unsatisfying, but knowing that there will be a follow-up that will hopefully answer those questions did do a lot to, I guess, help me be more satisfied with the ending. There are probably some more flaws we could get into. Is it truly a five-star immaculate book? I don't know, maybe not, but I enjoyed it and I had a lot of fun with it. And I don't really like murder mysteries that much. I had very low expectations going into this book. In fact, just to be completely honest, I really didn't want to read this book over White Horse. <laughs> when I posted that poll on the community tab where I asked you guys which book I should read, I thought for certain that you guys would pick White Horse. So I was a little bit, not disappointed, but I was a little bit surprised when this book won out. But I'm kind of glad that it did because I really enjoyed it. So if you haven't read this book, and there's probably a good chance that you haven't yet because it just came out, <laughs> I would highly recommend that you pick it up because it was a great, easy read, though it is a little bit chunky, that I would highly recommend. So that's the video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about this book, if you read it so far, or if you haven't read it, let me know if it's something that you might be interested in. And if you picked a different book through Book of the Month and you've read that one, let me know what you thought of your pick in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.